to external influence, uh, maybe how young they are as well, don't know. Um, if I'm in an extremely good mood, if I'm really happy and I already have something planned and I'm scrolling through my, my, my social media, seeing other people's happiness or extra wealth or extra health or whatever, I don't think it, it will affect me unless I'm already in that place where I'm feeling left out, I'm feeling isolated, I'm feeling lonely, I'm feeling miserable, I'm feeling like, oh, I don't deserve anything good, and I see other people are happy and getting on with their life, and yes, the screen is exaggerated, because you only post the really, really nice stuff, don't you? I mean, you pose for those uh, selfies and stuff. Um, so I think it depends on initially your mood or your mental state as well. That's, that's what I think. Uh, Talha also added, it's not always negative. Uh, social media also gives us some lessons like listening to influential people and learning from experience. Absolutely. And it does give us more sometimes um, awareness of things that are happening around the world, like, like news stuff, yes, but also social stuff, uh, standards that we want to live up to. Uh, we see acts of kindness. Those are my favorite videos, right? Acts of kindness, especially to, to animals. Yes, absolutely. So yeah, it does. It's not always negative. Absolutely. All right. So keep thinking about it. Let me know. Does social media make us more less, more or less lonely? What do you think from your own experiences when you are scrolling through all your platforms? All right. Let me know. Stay tuned. We will take a break now, and we'll be right back. It's 6.42 p.m. Time for Steve Plato and his son Dylan to do the dishes. They talk about everything, the awesomeness of his soccer team. Sometimes they don't talk at all. Then, okay. the dreaded splash fight. It's dad o'clock, and it's the best time of the day. Because the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. This was a message from SRFM Saudi Arabia. Cruising around from east to west to north to 
is out and is the word of mouth that is around your town. We got it straight from the best in line. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You are tuning into the finest station in town. We get the climb and face the so bad on track to keep you back to back and back again. In time you must. That's why I must adjust the best for you to rest and have the best. Tune into the mixers, listen to every word we strike on and jam to a striking hit slap on Tidea Radio right now. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, you're listening to the best radio station in town, and that is Tidea Radio, your one stop entertainment, the people's radio, and the heart of KSA. Here's another question, and it still has something to do with your health, but don't answer me, okay? Just don't answer the question. Do you pick your nose? <laughs> or know someone who does? <laughs> All right, now before you laugh, I'm saying, what? Okay, according to studies from 1995, around 91% of people pick their noses from time to time, but this gross yet common habit might be more dangerous than gross, so watch out. This is according to the head of the Clem Jones Center for Neurobiology and Stem Cell Research at Griffith University in Queensland, Australia. It's Professor St. John. He says, if you damage the nose lining, you can increase how many bacteria can go up into your brain. St. John then shared that research found that certain bacteria, of course, are linked to developing Alzheimer's. And the bacteria, which is called Chlamydia pneumoniae, I probably butchered that pronunciation. Uh, this bacteria can get into your brain through the nerves of the nasal cavity. Uh, this is uh, confirmed by researchers at Griffith University. And once this bacteria is inside, in a matter of days, the brain cells deposit beta amyloid peptide, creating a pathway to Alzheimer's disease. Meanwhile, Associate Professor Eckberg, who was part of the research team, explained that the cells are important defenders against bacteria, so you should not actually do this because it might damage the lining and the cells that are there to protect against invasions of bacteria. Still, they can uh, these kind of wounds that you make can actually help bacteria to spread if they get infected. So, if it's a habit you have or know someone has it, warn them against it, warn yourself against it, and don't do it. On the topic question, does social media make us less or more lonely? We got a nice hello from Ryan who says, hello from Manila. I just finished lunch here. It's five hours difference. That makes it 1.38. Wow. Uh, he also, uh, okay, so he says hello. Meanwhile, Shan says, hey, it's social media that we can always watch your show. So yeah, that's good. So social media isn't a bad thing, is it? Nah, it's always welcome. Absolutely. All right, so the question is, keep thinking about it and give me your answers. Does social media make us less or more lonely? And I think we've sort of agreed so far that it depends on your mood, your personality, who you are at first, uh, the state you're in mental health-wise, or if you didn't get enough sleep, for example, or you're having an anxious day, an anxious time. Uh, at that point, anything will actually seem negative and threatening and uh, make you feel worse because uh, remember I think we also talked about this in one other episode if you haven't gotten enough sleep if you're in a low mood you can actually imagine that other people are angrier that they're